Hello everybody, today I thought I would do a super fun get ready with me writing chat and I thought I would talk about where I'm at with missing the edits and I guess the things I've discovered along the way to getting ready to hit publish on missing. <laughs> In order for me to put makeup on my face, I'm going to have to take off my glasses. I thought about putting um, contacts in, but I've got a lot of work I need to do on my computer today. Obviously, we'll have to edit this. I need to do some editing and a whole bunch of other things. So wearing contact lenses and looking at a screen isn't particularly great for me. But yeah, so I'm going to be putting my makeup on partially blind. I'm not partially blind in real life, but... I'll probably experience a lot of eye strain. You get my point. I'm old and I need glasses and I'm going to have to do, and I've decided to do a get, get Ready With Me video. I've also got some tea and it's, um, it's, it's loose leaf tea. So I've got this cute little, so it's got Alice and one Alice at the end and it's just like a little, loose leaf tea holder I got from Wittards in London. I just put it in that pink um, Remington to stop it from leaking all over my desk. So that this particular tea, loose leaf tea that I have, it's it's called like tummy tea and it's from T2 and it, it contains peppermint, I think lemongrass, ginger, licorice and something else so before i start whoops just dropped my brush i'm gonna have to sort of brush back my hair so i can put my makeup on and not forget well i'm gonna use like a tinted Moisturizer from Chanel. This is going to be much harder than I thought. I've never actually done one of these videos before, as you can probably tell. So basically, by the way, spoiler alert, this uh, writing chat video will contain spoilers from my book Missing and the first book in my archaeological thriller series which has a tie-in which has a direct tie-in with Missing. So Missing is sort of like what happens after the first book in my archaeological thriller series. The reason why I've decided to do this is I read a book by J.F. Penn and it was called Day of the Vikings and there was another character in there from another series and I got right into the series because she and it was completely different it was still a sort of like a crime sort of it was sort of a thriller police procedural possibly maybe I think it's like a dark urban fantasy with a police procedural in there but because it's within the it still sits within the mystery thriller genre. I loved it and I thought this is a fantastic idea and I thought it totally I got wrapped up in this other series and it sort of came to an end and I was a little bit devastated because I don't think she's published other books in that series which is always the way. I'm reading other things while I wait for her next book in her arcane series. I'm really addicted to that actually. I got curious one day listening to her podcast and started reading the first book in the series and I uh, yeah Sorry, I've just got notes on this, um, on my screen because I'm hoping to stick to what I planned on talking about. If so, if you're watching this in the future and you have Missing or that first book in the Maximilian Archaeological Thriller series on your, on your e-reader device, you probably should not listen to this because I'm going to totally spoil it for you. I'm the type of person, I don't mind spoilers. But um, I realise that not everyone 
agrees with me. I can't remember if I put moisturizer on here. So what I'm using is, um, just in case you're curious, I know I'm certainly not a beauty guru, as you can see. So but this is by um, Clinique and it's called the Moisture Surge Intense and the reason why I use this particular one is I have my skin it's like a desert and because I'm normally in a more, I've, I've sort of grown up in Brisbane, Australia and it's, it's, it's a really similar temperature to Miami, Florida. So it's quite humid so I'm used to living in a more humid environment and London is definitely not humid like they say they have humidity but harsh reality is they've got no idea what they're talking about but um yeah so i'm used to living in a more humid environment so i need something with a lot more moisture so when i um submitted my book missing after i finished revised it to my editor for professional editing i got a three chapter edit and basically she sent me she was going to send me well she sent me a report based on and she explained the biggest problems biggest issues that she noticed in the book and then I would go through the rest of the book and make those changes and then I would submit it back to her for a um final proofread I've since learned since then that perhaps I should have gone with the full edit because it's easier because I've had to go through her notes and then look through the track, track changes on her um, in the edited, manus the edited manuscript and make a checklist of things I need to look out for in the rest of the chapters. It's, um, I think I've chosen something that was slightly more complicated but it's fine. I've also learnt this isn't anything against this particular editor she's actually really great and she's super kind and I guess I would recommend her I would recommend her to someone who has never had a professional edit before and you're a little bit scared about the how harsh someone might be because she's actually really kind very gentle about the feedback you get from her but I just sort of feel like she's possibly not the right editor for the book yeah, just based on the things that, the feedback she's gotten, that I've gotten from her. It's not anything against, like, she's still great. I just sort of think, oh, you possibly weren't a great choice. And I wouldn't have known that if I didn't submit the book to her. So she did actually read the book in its entirety. She gave me a few quotes and she gave me this option. And I chose this option because she came highly recommended. And... She was also busy, but I still wanted her to look at my book, so I chose a three three chapter edit based on that. So actually, some bit bad. This is the this is a um, illuminating primer from Lancome, and it's it's just really hydrating again and it's for, for the same reason as I use the um the moisturizer and what I'm putting on my skin at the moment is this um it's called it's by Chanel and it's called Le Beige and it's 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 by Chanel it's called Le Beige and it's a super it's the Sheer Healthy Glow Tinted Moisturiser and again I've used this because I sort of feel like I need I sort of feel like my skin just needs a bit of extra moisturising Sorry, I've just opened Ecamm Live on my computer just so I can use that video camera as a mirror. Oh, I just poked myself in the eye. With this tinted moisturiser and any other type of um, foundation, I generally, because of my age, I don't put it anywhere near my under eye area because it just makes me look old. Or, aka, it makes me look like I'm 
38. There's nothing wrong with that. But I just don't like to look like my age. Because I use my fingers also, um, I, I wash my hands a lot during the makeup, my makeup application process. So I'm just going to stop it here. So I just washed my hands and I had to check that this makeup actually looks okay in the mirror. I just had to move my keyboard and my um, mouse pad as you can probably see them sitting there and it's because they're white and I'm about to dust this on there. It's basically an illuminating setting powder and it's by Cover FX. You're not going to be able to see it because it's silver but it's by Cover FX and I got it from Sephora when I was in San Francisco and basically I chose this because it has, I think it contains more natural ingredients and this is in like the lighter shade they have because you don't get any paler than this. Actually I have a huge problem finding um, that power like foundation and powders. Because my skin's super pale and I have sensitive skin. I don't ever self tan. I tried it when I was younger and more foolish but um, because my skin's really sensitive it's not worth me putting on a tint, not a tinted moisturizer, like a self tanning lotion because in order to get the, um, the tanner to sit right I need to um, exfoliate my skin a lot and because my skin's dry and sensitive it's the worst thing you can do to that type of skin. So I'm just going to look in there. So basically, um, so when I submitted my book to the, missing to the editor, I started outlining the the first book in my archaeological thriller series. So basically, there's something that goes missing. There's an artifact that goes missing in missing. I know the title is a little bit spoilery. And in this first book in the archaeological thriller series, what happens is it's about the discovery of that item. There are obviously other people who want this item as well. So it's that type of thriller and it's and one of the characters in the book has a he has a decision to make and it's um it's sort of based on I guess that, that moral grey area. Do you do the wrong thing just to, to sort of, you know, save the people you love? Or do you do the right thing and put them at and put them at risk and and that's sort of where he, this particular character is at in the series. When I wrote the series I didn't actually want, I had intended to write a female protagonist like a female Indiana Jones and then as I started writing because she's in Missing, the, all of these characters are in Missing and as I got to know her, I know that sounds super weird, I got to know her a little better, I grew to not like her. I know that's weird that I've created a character I don't like and I just, if I'm going to spend a long time in a character's head and I do, I try and write a from like a close third person point of view so you do get their thoughts and because you're spending, uh, spending a long, long time in a character's head. So this is, um, what I'm about to put on my face is a blush and it's by that little logo in the corner, the flower logo is the logo for Lancome and this blush is in the colour, it's in colour number, It's I think it's called colour number two and it's rose something, it's in French so I can't actually tell and that's what it, oh, the joys of using makeup and that's what it looks like, I'm doing, doing this very badly and that's the colour it looks like. That's the colour, anyway. So I originally wanted to write from you know, this female protagonist and I didn't particularly like her. And because um, James Zalond is a bit, he's a little bit arrogant and it's, it's a bit cliche because he's French. He's, he's a bit of a French cliche. And, but deep down, doing the right thing is, is very important to him. He has that, I must do the right thing complex. I'm about to run out of battery. I don't know how long I've got. I think I might have to finish this on my iPhone. So where was I? James Alon. James Alon has a, um, he's got a really strict moral compass 
and doing the right thing is really important to him. Whereas this other character in um, Missing, he um, he doesn't have a strict moral. His moral code isn't as isn't as clearly defined, and he's a he's a kind of a do whatever it takes kind of person. And I think sometimes he allows life to to sort of he allows the things around him to compromise his values sometimes. And that t so he's almost an anti-hero. So he's a little bit different. And he's, I guess, he's not what you expect because he has an academic background. You, so you sort of expect him to look a certain way and act a certain way. And he's really not, not like that. And he's done a few questionable things. So he's almost, he's on the verge of an anti-hero. Anti whereas James is a typical hero or maybe not typical but he's um his um the values and his moral code will actually stop him from doing a few things or will, will, will stop him from taking shortcuts that lead him to Dane. in saying that he still has a habit of getting himself into trouble because he's possibly too curious stubborn slightly irrational sometimes but I found this other character interesting because he was because of his moral grey area was quite big if that makes sense this is going to be fascinating so I'm going to now have to oh by the way this is um pink plus pink blossom stay perfect color palette by number seven and it's a brand that's really exclusive to Boots. I think this is Boots' own. Boots is a pharmacy chain that has, they're not just pharmacy either, they're sort of like Sephora but with a pharmacy. For those of you who don't live in the UK. For those of you who, who live in the UK you'll recognise this particular brand. This is the only thing in this brand I actually use. So I have sensitive skin and I just have to be super careful. So I tend to use brands that actually use quality ingredients. Yeah, so I ended up choosing this male protagonist because I found him just more interesting and I didn't particularly like Elizabeth so like I really tried to make to make it work and I realized I couldn't write a series with her so as a result of me I've outlined the first act of the archaeological th thriller series and as a result I've discovered how the the artifact of missing is basically the sword that inspired the legend of Excalibur. So it's to do with Arthurian legends. So there's a castle in Tintagel, which is Cornwell, that's even though it's 13th century, I won't get into it because it's complicated, but um, there's links to Arthur there. So they believe that maybe the the person that inspired the legend, this is where this particular person may have lived or it's the location that inspired the legend. So this is apparently where Arthur grew up, but I didn't realise that. I didn't do enough research, so I decided that um, Excalibur would be excavated in Cornwell. And then, due to a bit of procrastination, I was watching a few Arthurian sort of history of the Arthurian legend documentaries, and I discovered that Cornwell... I originally thought Cornwell could have been the location for one of the location, locations for Camelot that inspired Camelot and it turns out it's not and it's actually the location that inspired the story behind his birth King Arthur's birth so I now have to now that I know this I now have to find another reason for Arthur Merlin and Excalibur to have returned to Arthur's birthplace and this to be Excalibur's final resting place so they could discover it in the modern century. So now I have to find a new reason for doing that because I've used Cornwell and the Tintagel Castle ruins as a scene in the book Missing and I don't want to have to go back and rewrite, do have to do research and rewrite this particular scene. So I have to find a reason for these people to go back to his place of birth and for Excalibur to be discovered there. So I have a few restrictions. I, I, I want to avoid rewriting missing at all costs. So I have to ob obey the parameters I've set for that. And I also have to sort of consider what would happen in real life. So I have to obey obviously the natural laws because it's set in the real world. But because it's 
based on legend I've got a bit of leeway but I have to decide now as I'm right as I'm outlining I've called the book Excalibur so book one's called Excalibur so I have to figure out because the opening scene is Merlin doing something with the with the sword so that the next scene where it's it gets next few scenes where you see the dis- the initial discovery before a team of archaeologists are called into the site so that makes sense as to why it's there I'm not just starting with something being partially es- es- excavated just so the reader so that'll be the prologue so I need to get that prologue scene right and I need to make sure that what I've done in missing doesn't contradict what happens in Excalibur because missing happens after that complicated yes I've made this complicated so yay I have to find a reason for Excalibur to be in Cornwall now I've just realized I need to apply my mascara and I don't have any tissues nice Because I can't quite see well due to the lack of lighting under my eyes, I'm going to have to do my mascara later when I've got good lighting because I've got two situations where there's a lot of shadow on my face. And so this is, so the, so the mascara I'm using is called, it's by Lancome and it's called Hypnose and it's just the, the standard Hypnose one and it's the waterproof edition in black because with their waterproof mascaras they only do them in black I, re- I was blonde for a while and I had to use a much lighter mascara so I think I used like a black brown color but now I just use black and this is a dual addict lipstick in the shade it's basically shade number 260 and it's called rose de chambre, de chambre. and it's this is what it looks like and it's like a really nice nude sort of colour. And yeah, I'm running out of it. I usually exfoliate my lips before I put on a lipstick. I don't particularly use eyeliner or lip liner, mainly because I just have no idea how to use them. And I like to keep my makeup simple. I like more of a simple look. Yeah, so I have, um, so at the moment I'm doing what I call a fourth draft of missing. I'm also outlining Escalaba, which is book one in my Maximilian Nichols archaeological thriller series. And then just in case you're wondering, you can probably see occasionally that there's a bit of a logo or there's a bit of writing on my shirt and it just says world domination and it's by Ted Baker. I originally had a darker um, shirt on like a black shirt and I thought yeah this isn't smart I'm about to do a get ready with me writing ch- writing chat video and I'm about to put makeup on my black shirt. Yay I can see you. Sorry about the changing camera angle during this video. I think I probably will do one of these videos, this particular chatty style of video once a month, it's just so I can give you an update. And obviously over time, I'm gonna get better at doing two things at once because I have a funny feeling this video is gonna be long and super awkward. Maybe not, maybe I can edit the awkward bits out. So anyway, thank you for watching this. If you love this, get ready with me, writing chat style video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel and want to be notified about more videos just like this, then hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you in my next video.